Greetings, fellow travelers, and welcome to Atlantic Forest Spirit of Survival. Once a vast, continuous tapestry of natural habitats, Brazil's Atlantic Forest now survives as a tattered remnant, one of the most endangered natural areas in the world. The forest holds astonishing creatures, many of which are struggling to survive in the shadows of large cities. Major threats to this region include logging, urban sprawl, conversion to cattle ranches, and plantations. Only 7 to 10% of the original forest remains. 40% of its plant species and more than 100 species of reptiles and mammals naturally occur nowhere else in the world. The giant river otter exhibit winds along the walkway. The layout was incorporated into the Amazon Beyond to allow guests an up-close view of these animals. We can find educational signs and kiosks throughout which inform us of the otter's endangered status and conservation work being performed. At the start or north end of the exhibit, we get a bird's eye view into the habitat, and from there it gently slopes down towards eye level at the viewing trellis. Two viewing spots will be located by a bridge in the middle that passes over the river. A sloping waterfall transits from the higher elevated south portion of the exhibit into the lower elevated north portion. Here as well as throughout the Atlantic Forest section, we will hear ambient background music, the plants in the giant otter exhibit were selected for their hardiness due to the fact that otters spend a portion of their day digging in and rubbing on substrates. This exhibit features a land to water ratio which encourages the otters to perform their natural behaviors including swimming, digging, basking, playing, and resting. Reaching a length of 6 feet including tail and weights of up to 75 pounds, the giant river otter is the world's biggest otter as well as the most vocal in terms of frequency and volume. Along with ferrets and badgers, they belong to the weasel family. This animal can eat up to nine pounds of food, mostly fish per day. The giant river otter has a fantastic sense of smell. It uses smelly musk to mark areas where they rest and dry out. Musk, which is stored in glands under the tail, contain molecules that don't easily wash away. Musk tells visiting otters, stay away, this spot is taken. Giant river otters live in family groups of two to nine individuals. Mothers typically give birth to one to four otters at a time. Older cubs or sub-adults help take care of their younger brothers and sisters. When otters become two to three years old, they leave the family group and find their own territories and mates. The giant river otter suffers from overhunting and poisonous mercury pollution released from South America gold mining operations into the rivers and streams. Also, it faces these additional problems. The giant river otter is relatively slow to reproduce. Its natural lifespan is only about 8 years, up to 12 years in zoos. In the wild, only about half of all otter cubs survive. And according to the World Wildlife Fund, of all the large vertebrate animals in tropical America, the giant river otter is a species most likely to become extinct. And here we learn to save a species, researchers need to learn where it lives, what it eats, how big the population is, and more. This requires observing and photographing individual otters. Because each otter's throat pattern is unique, like a fingerprint, researchers can identify and observe individual animals year after year. Next up are three terrariums featuring four species. When visiting, be sure to keep an eye out on the coconut houses at the bottom of the annulated tree boa habitat for hiding green and black poison dart frogs. As we walk the path between exhibits and along the brim, we will find queen palm trees and jacarandas, which provide shade for the exhibits. Heliconia and yellow ginger add to the lush foliage of this habitat. Thick fur protects the giant anteaters from biting and stinging ants. An anteater can eat as many as 30,000 ants per day, Although each ant has little food value, the combined nutrients from these little snacks add up to a balanced diet. The giant anteater laps up insects by moving its slimy 18-inch tongue in and out 150 times per minute. The slime, produced in extra-large salivary glands, disables the ants, preventing them from stinging and biting. A long, narrow skull enables the anteater to stick its nose and tongue into anthills, termite nests, and rotting logs. 
These animals have the longest tongue in relation to body size of any mammal. Anteaters are also good swimmers. They use their long snouts as a snorkel and they don't walk on their feet. Instead, with the claws curled up into the feet, anteaters walk on their fists. This helps to keep the claws sharp so anteaters can dig into the mounds of ants or defend themselves from predators. Giant anteaters have a sense of smell that is 40 times more powerful than ours. This enables them to smell ants or termites from a long distance, even up to several miles. Research has found that giant anteaters can identify a particular species of ant or termite by smell before they rip apart a nest. As we move away from the giant anteaters, we come to a small play area and several more information kiosks. Just beyond this are a series of wall displays featuring terrariums. We will start on the left side, which houses four terrariums. In the two lizard habitats, we'll find along with the named inhabitants, unlabeled basculisk. Four-eyed fish frequently inhabit mangrove marshes where acute vision allows them to spot and leap out of the water for prey on mangrove roots. And despite their name, they only have two. Each eye is divided to allow them to see both above and below the surface of the water. These anoles will face down threats by puffing up their body, flashing a flap of skin under the chin called a dewlap, gaping their mouth, and head bobbing. They are able to change color to many shades of brown and green. These iguanas use their tails as a defense against predators. Their heavily armored tail consists of five rows of enlarged spines. Their common name comes from their ability to secrete a milky white toxin from the pores on their skin when threatened. At the end of this side, we come across a multi-species exhibit. Displays around this habitat teach us about species survival plan and rainforest layers. In certain regions, tamanduas are hunted for their meat or skins. They are also collected from their native habitats and sold as pets. Like most species, tamanduas are also affected by habitat loss. They can consume up to 9,000 ants per day. Their tongues are very sticky to collect and pull ants and termites out of their mounds. Red rumped agoutis make a significant contribution to the forestation of their natural habitat. They bury seeds to eat at a later time. If they forget where they buried them, they can sprout into new trees. Agoutis are the only mammal species within their native range known to be able to open a Brazil nut husk. And here we find clover, a prehensile tailed porcupine. These porcupines are nocturnal and spend much of their time foraging in the trees. Their diet consists of flowers, fruits, and leaves. And the last species to be spotted in this exhibit is the two-toed sloth. And we'll get another view of them when we trek through the Amazon land of the giants. Going down the right side, we will come across four more terrariums housing five species. In humans, bites from this species results in swelling and discoloration, but no deaths have been reported. Giant musk turtles can be found walking along the bottom of streams and small rivers while foraging for food. Like other turtles, they breathe through both ends of their bodies. While underwater, they take in oxygen by way of their backside, which is called colloquial respiration. These nocturnal snakes are almost exclusively found in trees, rarely venturing down to the ground.
As we walk forward, we will come across two more terrariums leading to our last viewing spot. This species may be extinct in the wild due to the spread of a deadly fungus throughout their habitat. There are two population types that exist, this one being the smaller dry forest variety. The final viewing area of Atlantic Forest gives us overhead and two wall views of a mixed bat species habitat. Here we will find the pale spear nosed and neotropical as well as the short-tailed fruit bats. Short-tailed bats play an important role as pollinators and seed dispersers. Typically, they live in groups of up to 100 bats. They have an excellent sense of smell and rely on this to find their food. Jamaican fruit bats roost in tents that they create by chewing along the vein of broad leaves, causing it to fold over into a tent-like structure. They use echolocation but rely primarily on their sense of smell and sight to find food. And this will conclude our trek through Atlantic Forest Spirit of Survival at Zoo Miami's Amazon and Beyond. Thank you for joining me. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone. <laughs>